Uh, date today is April 4th, Year of Our Savior, Jesus Christ, 2022. And the title of this video is a continuation called, What Does God Hate? Part 3. What Does God Hate? Part 3. Now, continuing, we have uh, in 1 John 2, verse 20, we do have an unction from the Holy Spirit, right? As mm -hmm. men of God, but you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things, right? So through the Word of God, you should be able to meditate upon the Scripture, right? Today, the church has discouraged memorization because of all the different Bible translations, right? Right? Why should I memorize? And there's over a hundred plus different Bibles in modern English today, right? Specifically removing over 60,000 words from the living Word of God, including the toning blood of Jesus Christ. But most Christians, laity, Laodicean Christians look at you like, yeah, who cares, right, Stephen? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever, man. Mm -hmm. Whatever my whatever my Nicolaitan pastor tells me. I don't me, have time to read the Bible. I work all the time, so I'll let my pastor tell yeah, me what goes on. Yeah, I, I, I can never understand this Bible as yeah. a man. I can never grow stronger. I mean, this is just the, the excuses. But, you know, hey, I'm a Star Trek fan, and I can learn uh, the uh, Klingon, language. Klingon language. I like that as a good metaphor. It's like... Or Lord of the Rings, you know, you got all the different, and hey, you do you. I'm not judging, but I'm just saying your priorities should be at least growing in the Word of God, right? So continuing, uh, indeed, all who are saved are given uh, the understanding of God's Word, right? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know that this doctrine of all Scripture in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, is totally different from the doctrine and deeds of the Nicolaitans. Because the doctrine and deeds of the Nicolaitans is the pastor being the Pope. Is he not? Isn't he really just the Pope? He's the mediator between God and the people. So you have these churches across this land, and not all, but it's common enough, under judeo Americana, Judeo-Christian pastors, um, or churches, that the pastor is like the Pope. He's the mediator. He's the gatekeeper, and you have to go through him to go to God, right? So continuing, we see in uh, Job that inspiration means understanding, right? What about Job 32, verse 8? What about Job 32, verse 8? But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. All right. A spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So that's the Holy Spirit coming in. Our body is the temple of the Most High, right? And the Holy Spirit comes in and gives us inspiration. Inspiration through the unction of the Holy Ghost gives all who, are re all who read God's Word understanding of his word his word is given by inspiration of the holy spirit to understand it the church is made up of members of the body of christ what about first corinthians 12 verse 27 first corinthians 12 verse 27 now ye are the body of christ and members in particular Okay, as such, the church member should be consulted regarding issues of faith and doctrine. There is no place for special officers called clergy to be given charge over the members to dictate to them what are to be the faith and doctrines of the church. Issues of faith and doctrine, <coughs> like the flat earth, should be brought before the church membership so that they can search out the scriptures to see if it is there just as the noble Berean Christians did in the first century. What about Acts 17, verse 11, Stephen? Did you have a point? Well, I was going to say that uh, when we, we read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, yes. um, the next verse says, and God hath set, actually 28, um, you reread 27, yes. and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondary, secondarily prophets, <coughs> thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, which is different languages, right? right. Mm -hmm. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Right. 
So everybody's got yeah. different different. Yeah, we all have a but calling. We're all part of the body. Correct, and that's why this ministry is about leading people to Jesus Christ, having a sword of the Spirit, so we can all go to the Bible. Like I said, we we never say don't don't search the scriptures. We we have devised this content so you can follow along. We have one of our subscribers. She says by you repeating it twice, we're following along as you're talking, and I think that's wonderful. I don't want you to take a word we're saying. You search the scriptures, right? As the noble brands. Okay, now let's get to Acts 17, verse 11, right? Acts 17, verse 11. These were no more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. This the first century, they received with ready mind, they searched the scriptures, right? They verified them for themselves, right? But what are these, uh, what are these Nicolaitan pastors saying? Don't even look in the flat earth. Don't even look in the biblical cosmogony. Don't even look in that because you could be deceived. Even if it's the truth, it's of the devil is what they say. You don't need to read the Bible. Will, I'll tell you what it says. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're the clergy. I'm, I'm, I'm the dumb laity. Tell me what I should think. Is that and what we have to do? If you sin, you come and tell me so I can forgive those yeah. sins. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That, that's what God hates, ladies and gentlemen. Very good point, yes. Stephen. Um, so there is no way for the church members to do that if such issues are kept from them by the clergy that exercise lordship over them. The archetypical, ar archetypal, I'm not pronouncing that. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, okay. anyway. Yeah. Uh, Nicolaitan Church um, would be the Roman Catholic Church, right? Mm -hmm. Archetypical. The, after the Roman Catholic Church's initial ham-fisted treatment of Galileo, over time it unofficially adopted the heliocentric model of Catholic dogma, right? So where do you think this Americana Judeo-Christianity gets their creation story from? They get it from the Roman Catholic Church, which gets it from Judaism, which gets it from Pythagoras, which goes back to Mystery Babylon, which ultimately comes from the Satan, the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Satan always has a counterfeit. And they're the ones that also switch from Sabbath Saturday to, to, to Sunday. Sunday. Right. Yeah. They're worship, always switching things around. To worship around. the sun. To worship the sun, right? <laughs> so we see in 1992, they made it official when Pope John Paul II declared before the Pontifical Academy of Sciences that the Vatican Office of the Inquisition was wrong in 1633 when it forced Galileo under threat of torture and death to recant his heliocentric theory. You notice he didn't, we wasn't tortured like Bible-believing Christians were, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he was just exoterically said, hey, you better not say anything. So Pope John Paul II officially declared that Galileo was correct when he pronounced that the spherical earth revolves around the sun. One example of a Nicolaitan among the Protestants is uh, David Cloud, who is founder of, wow, Way of Life Literature and publisher of the Fundamental Baptist Information Service. Cloud describes his Way of Life Literature as fundamental Baptist preaching and publishing ministry, end quote. Cloud also runs the Fundamental Baptist Information Service. Way of Life publishes the Way of Life Encyclopedia of the Bible and Christianity. Woo! And, quote, the Advanced Bible Study Series. Way of Life also publishes the Fundamental Baptist Digital Library, which is composed of approximately 3,500 select books. Way of Life has produced Bible study materials in over 12 languages. Quote, in 1984, Way of Life began publishing O. Timothy Magazine, a monthly publication with the aim of urging preachers to stand for the truth and to resist error. End quote. Amen. Yeah. Cloud proudly portrays himself as an expert in Christian doctrine. His website st states, quote, Cloud has spent an average of at least six hours per day in study since his conversion in 1973. He has built a 6,000 volume research library, end quote. After all of this study of the Bible, he concluded that those who believe the earth is flat are, quote, wackos. End quote. 
He told one inquirer who believed in the flat earth that he had, quote, borrowed a bunch of nutty things from some nut, end quote. And this guy did all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Is he giving any scriptural references? No, all he does is he's doing ad hominems, yeah. right? We talked about what ad hominem means in a previous video you series. The person and not the point. Exactly. Because they can't. They can't go against the living word of God, right? People have been trying to for a very long time. He told another person who wanted to discuss the flat earth with him that, quote, I have zero tolerance in discussing that. It's as nutty as a fruitcake, end quote. Cloud stated that, quote, the flat earth stance is unadulterated nonsense. I am convinced that it is held by people with a perverse spirit toward reality, end quote. Cloud made those statements in an article he posted on his Way of Life Literature website titled, quote, a flat earth, nuttiness, and the lunar eclipse, end quote. Cloud is an example of the Nicolaitan spirit in the church today. Cloud fancies himself as a Bible expert mm -hmm. who has concluded that the earth is a sphere. He stated in his article, quote, As for a flat earth in the Bible, I have had the privilege of studying that book for an average of probably eight hours a day for 44 years. Well, what? let me back up. I thought he was only studying it six hours no, a day. Maybe it's changed. Oh, he changed it. Okay, all right. I have written a Bible encyclopedia and books on Bible interpretation and difficulties. I don't know everything, but I can check anything that is proposed as support for a flat earth. And having done so, I can say unequivocally that there is no support in scripture for such a doctrine, end quote. What? Yeah. Cloud states in his article that he has read the Bible for eight hours a day for 44 years. And he has found no support in scripture for a flat earth. He has added two hours to his previous hourly Bible study estimate, where he alleged he studied the Bible for more than six hours per day. Cloud deleted that previous six hour pronouncement from his website and in so doing apparently forgot about it. Having forgotten about that previously made up six hour figure, he just made up another one. I mean, if you're making stuff up, might as well shoot for the moon. Only this time he decided to go with eight hours of Bible study per day. That is the way the Nicolaitans roll. They just make up things. That is particularly evident when they make up ridiculous doctrine which they claim is in their Bible. But when their pronouncements are checked, it is determined to be nowhere supported by the Bible. Cloud allegedly spent all that time reading the Bible and found no proof for a flat earth. That suggests Cloud is missing a key guide in his reading the Holy Spirit. It is notable that in his article, Cloud does not cite a single Bible passage. Instead, he cites to the authority provided by NASA. Oh, NASA. Yeah. There we go. Never a straight answer. Yeah. Let's go with them. What does it stand for? Uh, National, National Aeronautics and Space Sp Administration. Yes. With the uh, serpent? By their yeah. own admission. In their own documents, they say all the figures that they have for trajectory, for plane flight, and everything is on a flat, level, stationary plane. Amen. Absolutely. It's not uh, not figured on a ball. No. No. Absolutely. So Cloud states, quote, NASA's <coughs> Apollo moon. Apollo. What about Apollyon, Stephen? Right? Yeah. Apollo, right? Yeah. Apollyon. So these are Satan worshipers. Mm -hmm. So you notice that he's quoting Satanists instead of, of the, the living Bible. word yeah. of God, right? So, these Nicolaitan pastors, quote, NASA's Apollo moon program proves that the Earth is round. Well, we never landed on the moon. <laughs> I saw it on TV. <laughs> I must be telling it must be the truth. truth. <laughs> the international satellite industry proves that the Earth is round. The international space program, ISS, which has been orbiting the Earth about 15 times per day for 17 years, proves that the Earth is round. The space shuttle program, which operated from 1981 to 2011, delivering supplies to the ISS and launching repairing satellites, prove that the Earth is round." End quote. David Cloud alleges that 
Quote, the international satellite industry proves that the Earth is round. End quote. Well, the satellite industry is an industry that is made up entirely of land, sea, and air technology that is being falsely uh, portrayed as linked with outer space satellites. Remember, there's only heaven and earth, right? Heaven and earth are connected. If there were satellites, you'd never lose a signal on your cell phone, period. Right, yeah. But we lose it all the time. And then, of course, if the space station was up there 17 years, how is it? It never... Never had any space debris. We're supposed to have twenty thousand satellites up there, and yet it's never bumped into one. And yet we had a we had a, one of those astronauts that almost drowned. Oh, he did in space. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in space. Yeah. Or maybe that was in an underwater training facility somewhere Facil in Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Almost drowned in outer space. I didn't know there's water in outer space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in their space it is. Well, it must be a cooling system because <laughs> space is pretty hot. I thought it was supposed to be cold. That was supposed to be very cold. <laughs> So we see here the betrayal that outer space satellites are being used is just as is just a guise. There are in fact no satellites in outer space because outer space does not exist, right? Remember there's only heaven and earth and heaven and earth are connected. We're in an atmosphere. That's why we're able to breathe oxygen, right? An airplane goes off of a flat or plane surface into the air, into the atmosphere. That's what it is. So um, because outer space does not exist, all of the communications that are described as satellite communications originate from and terminate at ground base stations, naval vessels, submarines, aircraft, or balloon bearing instruments that are called satellites. And they wouldn't have to put up all these towers on every, every highway, every five miles or a couple of miles of a huge tower. They wouldn't have to put those up if we had satellites. Why do we have to put up these big towers? Right. That are microwaving us. Well, and the, the, yeah. the point is that's where all the signals come from, right. the towers, right? right. The, not the satellites. So you're saying GPS was run by the military before mm -hmm. it became civilian, and that is all ground-based. It's all ground-based. And then we have connections between North America and even to Europe, which is all uh, underground, laying on the, on the floor. And uh, I've got laser guns ocean. that can fire 1,500 miles in line of sight. Well, you can't do that on a ball. No, you can't. It's impossible. And then you've got scientific experiments, whether it's the Michelson Morley, Michelson Gale, Sagnat experiment, the Bedford Level experiment, Aries failure. These are all scientific experiments that prove we are not moving. Why isn't that taught in public school? Yeah, they don't teach any of that. Yeah, because but it's real science. Because it's it's replicatable, duplicable, and measurable, and it's observable. That's, That's what science. science is. Scientific experiment. Yes, it has Absolutely. to be replicatable, duplicatable, measurable, and observable. Interesting. And you, they don't have any any scientific experiments for that. And yet you go through the Bible, the earth is on pillars, that it be not moved. Uh, when, the, when the fight was going with Joshua, how the sun and the moon stood still. Well, why would the sun and the moon stood? Why not earth? If we're the ones moving, the sun and the moon stood still. Right. You know, to, to, so he could seek his revenge. I mean... Didn't the shadow go back? Back 10 degrees. Yeah. 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 How did that happen? Yeah. Interesting. And what was the what was the Earth doing for till the fourth day in creation? Well, yeah, because it wasn't even created. <laughs> so the Earth was created before the Sun. And, mm. and the face of the deep, the face has to be a, yeah, a surface. Yeah, because water maintains the shape of the um, uh, jar or vest, uh, container that it's in. And Psalms nineteen one says, you know, the, the the firmament declares the glory of God. The firmament, it's yes. firm. Firm. A dome. And water is above the firmament. Water is above the firmament. Well, the sky's blue. Well, I can understand why David Cloud would go to NASA instead of the Living Word of God. Then it makes it makes makes sense now. This. Well, I mean, if he studied if he studied the Living Word of God for eight hours a day, you think he'd be able to use the Bible and prove his point? Oh yeah, what's six hours? NASA, now it's eight. Oh yeah. oh yeah, well, six hours. Maybe he studied NASA for six hours a day because he it doesn't sound like he studied the Bible. And look at all these digital select books, all of this stuff. It's interesting. And that's the problem is people are elevating everything above this. This is very simple. This, you don't have to be the laity. You don't have to be ruled by the Nike or the clergy. What we want you to be is a king and priest, a man of righteousness under God. Jesus Christ is ahead, and and uh, he is our mediator between God and mankind, male and female, right? It's a beautiful thing. So this author personally uh, attended the Satellite 2018 conference. Oddly, that event was a satellite conference with no actual satellites on display. 
That is not an exaggeration. I saw a total of four small models of satellites, two hanging by strings, approximately three feet in breadth from one end, uh, from end to end, including the solar panels. One in the display case and one on a table, each about 12 inches in breadth from one end, including the solar panels. But there were no actual satellites on display. There were all kinds of massive ground-based parabolic antenna, mock-ups of ground communication centers, and other large telecommunications equipment on display, but no actual satellites. Surprise, surprise. Imagine attending a car show that instead of automobiles themselves had booths dedicated to supplying the wonders of gas, lean stations, and car washes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Suppose that the only cars on display were a handful of small plastic models. Such an occurrence would be surreal. The Satellite 2018 conference was that kind of surreal experience. It was a satellite show with no real satellites on display. So we see, it is impossible to put a satellite designed to travel to outer space on display because outer space satellites do not exist. It is possible, though, to construct phony satellite that is portrayed as a real satellite. But what if the phony satellite is not convincing? You can imagine the difficulty in creating an object that is supposed to work in space, but when put on display may be subjected to scrutiny that would likely reveal that it could not possibly work as designed. The only satellite I ever seen come down was on a balloon. Yeah. It was on a high altitude balloon. And it had solar panels, and it was... How long was it up there? It was up there for years. Well, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, it was up there for a while. But that's how they put them, they put, them, they put balloons up, but there's nothing in space. Right, right, exactly. If, that. It, if, it, if space was just open, it would suck all the air. We wouldn't have any air in here. Yeah, exactly. It, it has to be enclosed. It's there, like a light bulb doesn't work if there's not a vacuum or a space in between. Yeah, you know. yeah, absolutely. So it would work the same way. Yeah, but there has to be a barrier there. There has to. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, really interesting stuff. We're um, all of this stuff. That is the risk the devil is not willing to take, right? So, I thought that that was really interesting about the Nicolaitans, right? Um, we see, let me move forward here. So, we got enough of Mr. Cloud, but I thought that was interesting. People get so impressed by all these Bible commentators and, and 3,500 books on display and all of this stuff. But you notice he's not quoting the living word of God. How long? We've been quoting the living word of God since he started filming here. So we see suffering persecution in this world of righteousness sake is the very mark of a Christian. Um, what do we see? Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is no greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. John 15, 20 to 21. Being reviled for speaking the truth, of the gospel or the God spell is a mark of a Christian. They're so afraid. These Nicolaitan pastors seek the glory and the preeminence in the world. Notice that what we talk about flat earth, what? You double dose of stupidity and moron and nutty fruitcake and all this other ad hominems, right? Well, the revilers intend their railings as curses. They're actually blessings, right? Matthew 5, 11 through 12. Matthew 5, 11 through 12. Matthew 5, 11 through 12. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so pure persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. Right. So we see most Nicolaitans have a desire to avoid persecution and be friends with the world, right? Uh, James 4, verse 4. James 4, verse 4. Doesn't it talk about ye adulterers and adulteresses? Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world 
is the enemy of God. Right, Ooh. right. And you notice adulterers and adulteresses is perfectly going along with the fall of the Western civilization yep. under the banner of feminism, right? The family unit has been destroyed, generally speaking. Nicolaitan pastors who ignore even reject God's account of his creation in order to keep their standing in their religious community justify their stance by averring that the biblical account of God of a flat stationary earth is not really germane to the gospel. But remember, the gospel means God's spell, and it means the entire, all scriptures given by inspiration of God, from Genesis to Revelation. They have become enemies of God. People do not have the authority to pick and choose what they like in God's word and dis discard the rest. Indeed, the gospel is every Every word of God. God, gospel literally means God's spell. That means God's word. Jesus made the point in Matthew saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4. The gospel is every word of God. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. You notice that he and the word of God, he is the word of God. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Right? Proverbs 30, 5 through 6. We see all of these Nicolaitan pastors. So you have two extremes, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, and the Laodiceans, which are both connected, when you have one, you have the other. And that's why we see in America, we see Americana Judeo-Christianity. And that's why when I, and I show sound doctrine, they just look at you like deer in the headlights because they're Laodicean. They're like, now I'll just leave that up to my clergy. Whatever my Nicolaitan pastor, whatever my Nike power, victory, authority over the laity. I'm this dumb laity. He's my mediator. He's my pope. He's my papa. He's my Jesus Christ. That's why God hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. What does God hate? He mentions it twice in Revelation. He hates the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. So this is about not being and coming out of that, accepting the doctrine of Jesus Christ, his gospel, the entire word of God. Come to Jesus Christ. God bless you. Bye.